Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In today's video, we're going over how to play PSP games on your PC. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, if you're wondering about PSP on Android, I've got you covered. I'll leave a link to this Android tutorial video in the description below. And just like on Android, the emulator I recommend is PPSSPP. This is available in two different ways, one via the standalone emulator and two via RetroArch. For this video, I'll be tackling the standalone emulator, but if you're using RetroArch, just go on ahead and download the PPSSPP core. To pick up the emulator, head on over to PPSSPP.org. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can just go on ahead and click on it and you'll be on this page. Once you're here, there are two different links. One says download and the other one says buy PPSSPP gold. PPSSPP is 100% free. There is a paid version, but it doesn't really differ from the free version. They don't hide anything behind a paywall. They have a little section to tell you exactly what you get with the paid version of the emulator. They say it makes you feel good. You get a fancy golden icon that you can show off to your friends. And most importantly, it lets the developer spend more time working on the emulator. So think about it as a donation. So for this video, we're just gonna focus on the free version. To pick up the free version, head over to the blue button on the main page where it says download. Click on that and it'll bring you to a separate page altogether. From here, select your platform of choice. For me, I'm going to select PPSSPP for Windows. For Windows, there are two different links here, one for a zip file and one for an installer. You don't really need to install anything for this emulator to run, so I just recommend picking up the zip file, so just go on ahead and click on it. It's not a very big file here, it's coming in at 21.3 megabytes. When it finishes downloading, feel free to extract the files into one specific folder. For me, I created a folder on my desktop called PSP. So what I'm going to do is extract all of these files into that folder. Once it's there, you're almost good to go. Once you've extracted everything, go on ahead and click on PPSSPP Windows 64. This will open up the emulator. If the emulator doesn't open up for you, try PPSSPP Windows. Most people nowadays are on a 64-bit processor, but if you're not, then the standard PPSSPP Windows should work. And both emulators look the exact same. From here, scroll over to the right side of the emulator where it says Settings and open that up. On the main graphics settings, this is where you change things if your games aren't running smoothly or if you want your games to look extra special. For the most part, these default settings should be pretty good for most PCs, but at the same time here, feel free to tinker around and see what works for you. The first setting to check out here is the back end. So if you're running into performance issues with your game, try changing up the back end and seeing if that helps. For me, I've got it set to Direct3D 11, but you might need to set it to Direct3D 9 or even OpenGL. Either way, changing this setting will have a pretty big impact on your overall game emulation experience. So check this out, try a few different settings and see what works for you. For me, I'm gonna keep it on Direct3D 11. Next up, if you're having performance issues, click mode here and then select skip buffer effects. This might help speed things up. And for everyone else, just probably stick with buffered rendering. It shouldn't be too much of an issue for you. Also, if you're running into frame rate issues or stuttering issues or anything like that, maybe try turning auto frame skipping on and seeing if that helps speed things up. If it does, then great. If not, try manually selecting it and maybe doing two or three frames and that'll really speed your game up. But for most people here, you can probably just set this to off and leave it there. Now scrolling down to post-processing effects and these settings will completely change how your game looks. If you wanna put on CRT scan lines, you can. If you wanna change things up here, you can. You can do grayscale, you can invert your colors. It's all up to you. So feel free to play around here, choose something that you like and stick with it or just choose nothing. For the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna select off. Scrolling down to performance, this is where you can make your game look really, really good. So by default, it's set to auto for rendering resolution. If you wanna crank things up here, you can. So I'm gonna set mine to 10 times PSP. That means the graphics that I'll see are 10 times better than a PSP. If you're noticing a bit of screen tearing when you're playing your game, go on ahead and turn V-Sync on, otherwise just leave it off. For those that have performance issues, just make sure your rendering resolution is set to one times PSP. That should help speed some things up, and there are also some speed hacks here. You can try clear frame buffers on first use, lazy texture caching, and disable slower effects. There's no guarantee these will help, but they might. Now for me, I don't need any of these on, so I'm just gonna make sure they're turned off here. I'll turn my resolution back to 10 times PSP, and let's go down into texture scaling. For texture scaling here, you can upscale your textures up to five times if you want, and you can also choose the upscale type. 
Each type here will make your game look considerably different, so choose wisely. Actually, just play around and see which one you like the best. For me, I'm just going to keep it as off. In texture filtering, I have a nice atropic filtering on and it's set at 16 times. If you're running into performance issues, just turn this off. For me, I'll just keep it set to 16 times. And the last thing I change on the graphics settings here is show FPS counter. I like to see how my games are running and I like to monitor them. So what I do is I display the FPS and that way I can tell if there's a speed issue. On the audio menu, you don't really need to change anything here. On the controls tab, this is where you map your controls. If you're using a keyboard or a gamepad, go on ahead into control mapping here and set your controls up. Changing controls is pretty straightforward. Just highlight the control you want to change, press enter, and then assign a new button. One thing I really like about this menu is that you can map multiple controllers. So if you want to play on a keyboard and then switch to a controller, you don't have to remap anything because it'll store up to three different controllers. On the networking tab, there is multiplayer available and I'll tackle that in another video. On the tools menu here, you don't really need to change anything. If you're an experienced emulator user, you can go into the developer tools and maybe take a look at the CPU core, there's not really a whole lot of stuff here that I would recommend using. On the system menu, you don't really need to change anything here either. There are some things enabled by default that you can disable if you don't like. For example, in the emulation settings, it does say fast memory unstable. If you're running into some issues, you can just turn that off. Otherwise, I really probably wouldn't change anything here. And if you scroll to the bottom of the page, there is an option here to change your PSP model if that's what you're looking for. For the most part, you can probably just keep it at PSP 2000, 3000, and you should be good to go. Now that we've got the emulator set up and pretty much ready to go, the next step is to load a ROM. There are two ways to do this. One, load a ROM directly from a folder on your computer or to download a ROM. Yeah, you can download ROMs with this app. To download a game, head over to Homebrew and Demos. From here, click Download from the PPSSPP Homebrew Store, and it should load up some games that you can download. The one game I do recommend from here is Cave Story. This is a fantastic game and one I definitely recommend playing, especially considering it's free. So I just clicked on Cave Story and now I'll click on Install, and that's pretty much it. Now if I click Back, it'll bring up Cave Story on the main menu. So I'll click on Cave Story here and test it out. So here's Cave Story up and running and everything seems to be going okay. You can change settings on the fly. So if I go click game settings here and then go down into, I don't know, let's go to rendering resolution. You can see the difference now it's on 10 times when I go down to one times and it's considerably worse graphics. So if you want to make it a little bit better here, we'll go back to game settings, go into rendering resolution and crank it back up to 10 times. You can see how clear it gets. And if you want to throw a filter or a shader on this while you're playing a game, you can as well. So go into game settings, post processing shader, and then select the one you want. For example, if you want CRT scan lines, you can put those on. Or maybe you want to put on something that smooths everything over. Maybe you don't like looking at pixels. You can do that too and just choose a filter like this where it kind of blends all the pixels together. Just feel free to play around here and choose what works for you. From here, I'm just going to stop this game and load up a game from my PC. So to do that, I'm going to select emulation and then stop. And that brings me right back to the main menu. So to play a game off your computer, just go on ahead and select where your games are located. Make sure to select the right drive and the right folder. Also, make sure to unzip your ISO files. Once you select where your ROMs are located, it should automatically find your ROMs. For me, it automatically found Need for Speed Underground Rivals, so I'm just going to select it and load it. And just like that, my game is up and running and running absolutely fine. I can change graphics again on the fly if I wanted to. I can change other settings on the fly. Overall, this is a pretty darn good emulator. But anyways, that is all I've got for today. Hopefully this video was helpful to get you set up and running with PPSSPP. It's a great little emulator. It's simple, it's straightforward, it's easy to use, and most importantly, it just works. Let me know in the comments below if there's another emulator for a different system you want me to check out. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone, take care.